What's going on YouTube? This is Luke with Endless Entrepreneurs. Just coming to you guys with a video. I am back to a schedule. Finally, we are in the new house. Those of you new to my channel, I'm a part-time eBay seller. Uh, I sell uh, primarily men's clothing, a little bit of women's jeans, uh, things like that. Uh, all thrifted from uh, thrift stores. Uh, I do buy in wholesale and bulk lots occasionally. I have had a recent really big uh, bulk buy not too long ago. Uh, and I work full time uh, in the corporate finance world. Uh, so actually I've transitioned to consulting contracting or doing contract work. So I'm kind of a little entrepreneurial there as well. But uh, And I also invest in real estate now. So I have my first rental property and kind of have the trifecta going on with the, uh, the day job, the eBay and the real estate investing. So I'm gonna jump over to the chat real quick just to make sure my sound is good. It's been a little while since I did a live video. What's going on everyone? Looks like I sound okay, which is good. This is, you'll notice I got blank walls behind me. I'm on my futon in my new eBay headquarters room, which I'm calling it. I have tons of inventory sitting here with me and uh, just kind of getting settled in. Uh, we closed on a new house this last Tuesday, uh, spent all week moving small stuff, did the big move Saturday, I have all my inventory here now. Uh, so finally got my room kind of how I want it. Got my flat lay station over there, got a mannequin station over there. Um, got a spot to do videos now. So kind of really getting back into rhythm and Pretty excited about it actually. Uh, it's been a little chaotic for the last month, kind of one foot in, one foot out, and to finally be out of the townhouse, getting that ready to rent, and being in here, it's just been a, a really, uh, I don't know, like it just kind of a weight lifted off my shoulders, I guess. I am pretty tired from the move. Uh, I can, in the process of moving, I consolidated two 10 by 20 storage units, which I used to run my eBay business out of. And in that, we filled a 17 foot box, box truck completely with um, all the bins I have in the inventory, broke down the shelves and all that stuff. So it was pretty uh, pretty intense, the amount of moving and things we did. And then once we had it here, had to unload it obviously, had to reorganize it. I have a detached garage now, which is like my inventory spot and a little bit of attic room, which I'm doing a little bit with here for some of um, my lighter inventory. Uh, but it's just great not to have to go to the storage unit, gain so much time back in my day, can get back to one day handling time and shipping and all that. So just very relieved with that. Um, and I do appreciate, I put out a video and put out an Instagram post for feedback from everyone. Uh, so I've got a really solid idea of what content people are looking to see. Um, and so I'm gonna try to deliver that, you know, twice a week is gonna be the goal from here on out minimum, sometimes the third video one time allows. Um, so, but as I said, Sorry for the long intro, but we're going to jump into November results, uh, how they were for me. Keep in mind, I only listed probably seven or eight days the entire month because of the moving, the closing, the holidays, all that. Uh, so I listed very, very little, was not active. And um, so I was pretty happy with my month concerned I didn't do a whole lot. Uh, let me check the chat one more time here. Uh, looks like, so Anthony, Anthony just said moving is a nightmare. I did it back in June. Yeah, it's, it's rough. And we only were in that townhouse for like a year and two months. So I feel like I just finished moving. <laughs> feels like it wasn't that long ago, but I'm uh, pretty excited about that. So in any case, I'm going to jump right in guys. I'm going to share my screen and the goal will be, I'm going to share with you 15 items I sold in November. I'll show you my November results. Hopefully it'll help you in your reselling and just what to be on the lookout for. And then the back half of the video, I'm going to talk about my goals for December. Now that I'm kind of settled, what I'm trying to accomplish to close up the year strong, make sure I'm in a really good position in 2018. So uh, let me jump in here for you guys. I'm going to share my screen. All right, and I will answer questions at the end, just kind of hold them and we will get to them. All right, so here is, oh, got an offer. This guy keeps lowballing me, I keep declining him, so eventually he'll come up. <laughs> um, so as you can see, I did just a tad under 5K for November. Um, pretty, I mean, looking at fourth quarter, it's pretty disappointing because, you know, November you think is gonna be your stronger months and I've had definitely a bunch of stronger months this year. Considering the listing activity I've done, in September, October, and November, it's actually really good. I mean, I've probably listed the total amount of items for those three months has probably been equivalent to what I used to list in one month for like during the early summer, I was listing like 350, 400 items a month. So, um, you know, all the work I put in in the summer and the spring, especially with my bulk order really carried me through here and allowed me to sustain sales uh, without actually having uh, a lot of momentum and stuff that I was putting. I didn't put a lot of sweat equity into this month, I guess I should say. And you can see here a lot of the L.L. Bean stuff from my bulk. Look at that. I mean, all a bunch of new L.L. Bean, new L.L. Bean. You can see that kind of is was kind of sustaining me throughout. And that was work I put in back in May and June. So 
Um, but that is what it is. Um, I don't have the exact count of the items I sold, so I'm sorry about that. I haven't uh, updated my spreadsheet just with the craziness of everything. And normally in these videos, we'll go over how many items I sold by day, so you can kind of see like the average sell price and such. But my average sell price for the year is flooded right around between like 23 and $27. It's fluctuated month by month, so 25 is a pretty good average, I would say, for my model and my store, and that includes shipping. All right, so this was an item, I'll jump right in here, an item that I sold pretty recently. Um, and I had this up for like maybe a month, uh, not even. Uh, they're Oakley, they're like this dark gray Glen plaid. You can see the logo on the top right there. Um, got these for $3.99. Um, they're kind of like a dry fit material, definitely a golf pant. Uh, they're 34 by 32, so a pretty standard size. And uh, I got full asking price for these, no offers or anything, $36.88. Um, I know it's weird pricing, but I adjust by a penny like every other day, um, taking price down, so it's just what happens. And then $4.99 shipping. I did sh switch to charging shipping a couple months back, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm probably going to stick with it for the foreseeable future. I'll show you a couple more pictures here. You can see they have the um, whoops, Oakley logo here on the front and the tag there. So uh, Oakley doesn't do as well for me shirt-wise, and you can see this is a problem with the eBay app too, by the way. Sorry to go on tangent, but... It'll show when I make my listing in my draft that this picture is correctly positioned. And then for whatever reason I set it live, some of the pictures don't, they like reverse back to the way the picture was taken or something. It's really stupid. This one's the same way. This one's the same way. Really annoying. Um, but in any case, but Oakley does well for like these type of items, shorts and the pants. Um, some like their heavier items, like their sweatshirts or pullovers, uh, like zip ups. But they're like like their polo shirts and golf shirts, they don't do as well. So I would stay away from those. Of course, you can get into the right price, you know, 50 cents of the bins. I mean, you should probably grab it. Um, so and I do all my shopping at retail stores, so that's why I, I use that as kind of my that four dollar purchase price is about average. Uh, so here's another this is like a hiking pant. Uh, they're Columbia, their titanium omni dry was kind of the line, their cargo. Uh, I put in all these keywords, and this is something I've gotten a lot better at over time, is putting in, you know, so I have cargo, hiking, and ski all in here because they really could be used as any of those. They could be like shell pants for skiers. Um, you can use them while you're out hiking. Uh, they're definitely outdoorsy type pants. Uh, they're XL. Uh, here's the measurements I included as well for the men. Uh, but sold for full price, again, uh, $29.89 plus $4.99 shipping, no offers or anything. These are up for, again, I realized them right around the same tab as the Oakley. So not too bad. I'll show you some of the pictures here. And I've been doing flat lace for all my pants of late. You can see the Omni Dry there. Um, and even the color is not that great with these. I just did this on an iPhone. And so it just goes to show you, you don't have to be perfect to make sales. Uh, this is one I post on Instagram. So this is a Tundra. This is like, I call it like the uh, the less valuable version of Kuji. Um, and this one wasn't even like a textured, like the, the Kuji ones are normally like that textured, I think it's called mercenized or something like that, cotton. Um, this one wasn't textured at all. It just had a really crazy pattern to it. Uh, and so I picked this up quite a while ago. Well, no, I guess not quite a while. This is E259, so not that long ago. Um, and it, it just, I don't know, it's, hideous and 90s themed and these things sell. So um, this sold actually took a best offer of $29.99 plus $4.99 shipping. Here's your tag, it's Barracuda by Tundra. Um, as long as these are crazy patterns, I will pick them up. You usually can get, you know, standard 25 to 35 for these. Kuji ones, obviously you can get a lot more for, um, but these were, you know, they're what they are. All right, so here is a uh, suit. This is a less popular style. I love selling suits and blazers. Uh, if you're new to my channel, that's some, one of my niches that I really enjoy selling in. Uh, so it's a YSL of St. Laurent. Um, gray herringbone was the pattern. Let me see if I can show you. Can't really see it that clearly on there, but it's like a herringbone stripe um, on it. And it's double breasted, which is not as popular of a style as it used to be. Um, so. I had this listed pretty high. It was at 8147. I took a best offer of $50 plus $5 a ship. I was in this for 10. Uh, so decent with decent return. I uh, want regional A, I believe. I can't remember how much. It's somewhere between like eight and ten dollars a ship. They were I think they were like Midwest. Um, so not too bad. If it was a more popular style, I probably would have held out for a lot more, probably closer to like the hundred mark, I would say if it's a popular style. Um, so but either way, good return for ten dollars. Let me show you some of the tags here, sorry. This is kind of how I picture my suits. 
There's your tag. And it's one of the more modern tags. It's got from Dillard's. Uh, this, this is another unique thing. <clears throat> so I bought, I'm trying to see, I bought, um, how many of these? I think I bought about 60 signed autographed uh, sport photos from the same guy I bought this huge jersey lot from like over a year ago. He had been trying to unload them on Facebook group. I was watching for several months and he just couldn't sell them for the life of him. Uh, so I made him an offer for, he was asking like 20 bucks a photo and I made an offer for $7 a piece for the entire binder. And it was, I think it was like 55 or 60 of them. Bunch of random, all different professional and college sports. Now this is one of the more notable ones for current people. And um, so he said yes. And I figured for me, it was like, I'm gonna sell some of them. And then the ones that don't sell, I'm just gonna frame them and they're gonna go kind of in my man cave room. I'm probably gonna put them on this wall behind me actually. Just frame them and get them on the wall. So it's just kind of a cool thing. Um, but this one sold for $22.64 plus $4.99 shipping. Um, they're super lightweight, cost two dollars and sixty cents to ship. Ship them like a plastic. Uh, he gave me a bunch of plastic cases that came with it that I ship them in. Um, and I sold a Jarek McKinnon one as well early this month for right around the same price. So, um, not a bad buy. It was more of a hobby buy, but I am selling some of them that I don't care that much about. Uh, here are some silver jeans. Actually, I'm gonna check the chat real quick just to make sure we're good. All right, looks like we're good here. All right, flipping back. Sorry, guys. Um, so we got silver jeans. Uh, these are the boot cut um, Suki line. Distressed. Uh, they're a little distressed, anyways. You can see from around there. Silver jeans always sell well for me. I mean, I get jeans here flatly priced for four ninety nine. Um, so these sold. I actually took a best offer of uh, I think it was twenty seven ninety nine plus four ninety nine to ship. And this is kind of how I do my flat lights. And again, there's that eBay app just getting the best of me. It's really frustrating. Obviously not to turn the sales, which is nice. Um, but definitely be on the lookout for silver. They are good. And then you have this built iron workers. Uh, this was some of the first time I've ever found these. Um, and at the you can see right here, the zipper was attached on the back. I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be or not, but I made sure to put it right here. Um, either case, got these for $3.99. Uh, they gave me the the women's slacks price for them, and I'll show you some of these pictures so you can see like the iron workers. There's a little logo, um, but these are like motorcycle um, pants. They had, they had knee pads in them. Um, here's the front of them. That's what they look like. I had never seen them before, but these sold very quickly. I got an offer for thirty nine ninety nine. They hadn't been up long. They're women's size eight. I took it for uh, forty bucks, basically plus five dollars a ship. So, super awesome return. Be on the lookout. These built iron workers motorcycle gear. Actually, I'm gonna check one more time here. I don't know what that is. That's weird. Hopefully, everyone can chat. I don't know what's going on with that. Someone type something in the chat, just let me know that you can see that okay. I just want to make sure that we're good to go and that you guys aren't being blocked. I haven't done a live video in a while, so I'm not sure if there's something funky going on. Um, looks like nobody's chatting. This is everybody can chat now. That's really weird. Oh, you can see it. Okay, good. Sorry, guys. I just, I had never seen that before, so I was like, what's going on? All right, I'll jump back in, sorry. <clears throat> so this was an item you can see from that white background and I'll touch on that a little bit later and talk about some of my goals for December. This is a really old listing. I picked this up for like $7.99 when I first moved here to Charlotte. Um, this is probably almost two years old at this point. And um, it, it sold for, four, I think $39.99, I took the best offer plus $5 shipping. So I was happy to unload that. I don't know that I'd pick this up again unless it was in perfect condition. Uh, this was missing one of the belts that goes around it. Um, it had a little bit of wear, but not too bad. Um, but either case, good flip. I wanted to include just to show that old inventory will sell and that you know buying and holding isn't a bad strategy for getting it for the right price and you have the right storage options. All right, here again, getting back to the blazer and sport coat um, mode, and this is more of a suit jacket actually, um, but it's a dark navy Glen plaid uh, window pane uh, suit jacket, but you know, it, it can be worn without the matching pants. I mean, a lot of these patterns people wear with jeans. Um, I work 
in the city now or the banks. A lot of people wear these just with uh, suit jackets with jeans and non-matching pants. So um, you can you can sell these a lot better than you think. A lot of people will stay away from them, but I pick them. I get them for four ninety nine a piece, so they're kind of a no brainer for me to pick up. My pictures aren't even that great. This is the green label Ralph Lauren, and it's a bigger size, which really helps. Forty eight regular. Uh, took a best offer of forty dollars plus five dollars a ship, and I was in it for five. And I can fit these in a flat rate envelope for five ninety five, so they're pretty economical to ship, even though they're a little bigger. Don't be scared to jump in. There's a lot of money to be made with the blazer, sport coats, and suits. All right, here is, this is a really unique item. I love finding these one-off Orvis items that are just not, you don't see them all the time. Um, I use the keywords you'll see here, uh, heavy button front, outdoor, hunting, shooting. Um, and you'll see as I start to show you the pictures here, why. Um, so the first big thing is it's got this big over the shoulder patch here. Uh, the heavy, you know, heavier cotton button front um, definitely is a more durable shirt. It's got the front pocket with a button on it. Um, in the back, it has some vents you can see there. I actually should have done a better job picturing the vents. Um, and then here's your tag. This sold for uh, full price, thirty six fifty two. No offers. Four ninety nine shipping was really great. Great to move that. And I was in this for three ninety nine. They charged me the shirt price at Goodwill. Uh, these I found eh, a couple months back. I think it was around the summer I found these. Uh, they're Kooji jeans. I don't normally pick up women's Kooji jeans used, uh, but these ones happen to be brand new with tags. Um, got them for $4.99. So I was really happy with that. And initially the comps didn't look great. The MSRP on is $118, you can see there. Um, I talked to Jason, Prof Sales, over uh, his YouTube channel. I was chatting with him a little about what to price them at because there didn't seem to be a lot of comps up. Um, and the ones I did sell look really bad. Uh, so I've had these up for a while. I just kind of let them sit. And they sold for full price, $33.51 plus $5 shipping. They went international, which I think is why they sold for that much. Um, and I can't imagine what they paid because I, I only use the global shipping program. Um, so it was happy to flip those for sure. I got four more items, and then I'll jump into the December goals and back over the chat. Uh, so this was a suit. I unfortunately did not sell this for $100.71. I wish. Uh, I did take a best offer of $65 plus $5 a ship, so $70 all in. I was in this for $10. Um, I've had this for quite a while. And actually, these suits in particular don't take that long for me to sell. Usually, the Oxford Clothes usually sells a lot faster for me. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. uh, but this one took quite a while for some reason. And this is a pattern I would have expected to sell fast. I don't know if it was the size. It might be the 29 length pants that they're already kind of hemmed and adjusted. It could have been. Um, in either case, let me show you some of these pictures. I was happy to move this. Uh, there's your pattern. Let me see. There's your logo. And the size right there. And this is kind of how I do the pants. Um, I showed the flaws there. You can see um, messing the exterior front button. Uh, so I made sure to highlight that. So it just goes to show you, even if there is flaws, like you can you can highlight them and still make a decent amount of money if their brands you know dictate that. All right, this was a nice sale. Uh, took a best offer of forty five dollars plus shipping for this. Uh, it's a dark gray window pane, three button. Uh, it was hundred percent wool, forty one regular. This is one of my more recent ones, and I can tell because I started using this red dress shirt underneath. Um, I just kind of switch it up, like the. Backgrounds, I'm now using my background is using for flat lays. I'm now using for my um, shirt pictures. And the one I was using for my shirt pictures, I'm using for flat lays now. And I'll mix up like the shirt underneath. And I do that every couple months just so I can accurately kind of time place how old the inventory is quickly. Because um, I don't need the exact date or time. It's not really that relevant or helpful to my business. Um, but that helps me, you know, kind of do what I'm looking to do. Um, here's your logo, Brooks Brothers. I know Thor just walked in there with my golden retriever. He's still getting used to the new house and what everything is. It's pretty funny watching him explore and figure out what's going on. Um, but sorry, let me pick on that for a second. And there you go. He's being a little, a little mischievous right now. So yeah, that was a good flip. $4.99, probably $5.95 to the ship. And staying with that theme, we have this uh, Fasenable. It's a brown Glen plaid with elbow patches. Um, anything with the elbow patches as a sport coat seems to really do well. Uh, it was made in Italy, so I put Italian here in the keywords. Um, really nice pattern. Really, It was an excellent, excellent shape. I don't know if it even have been worn maybe once or twice. Um, let me go through and show you some of these pictures. You can see the elbow patches in the back here. Um, I tried to show them the light 
really was not great for these. When I was showing the backs, you can see the colors changing. But I try to take as many pictures as I can. Here is your tag. I actually don't find these a whole lot um, in blazers and suits. I find a ton of dress shirts, but I very, very, very rarely will find sport coats like this in there. So I picked this up for uh, $4.99, and it sold for – I took it best off for $30 plus $5 a ship. And to finish things up, we have this Terrell Owens jersey, which I did post on Instagram. This sold for full price, $36.71 plus $4.99 to ship. Um, it's just an adult large, nothing too special. Um, everyone always rags on me and says, there's no way you can get these prices for screen print jerseys, but um, I just seem to keep getting them. Um, I've sold quite a few. I, I remember I sold a Chad Pennington one for like $34. Sold a Ben Roethlisberger in the 30s. Um, I mean, if you're doing, and this one actually had flaws. You can see I highlighted here. Um, you know, people want what they want and when they want it. And if you're willing to sit and wait on it and you, you have a good item and you market it well and you write the keywords, I mean, I, I'm a believer that you can get some max value, especially on the more collectible things like this. So I like to do the first picture of my jerseys to be the back if the name's there. I think it's a really good window picture to see. It gives them a good visual of what it'll look like on them. Um, so I was in this for $3.99, found this at a Goodwill. All right, so let me stop sharing and bounce back to the chat here. All right. Uh, so the Treasure House has said that that little thing has been coming out of everyone's chat lately. That's odd, interesting. Um, all right, so yeah, that's that's where I finished. That was my November. You know, it could have been better for sure. I'm sure I see a lot of people have been crushing Novembers, and I love seeing everyone doing really well. Uh, I think one of the funnest things about being a part of this community is seeing other people do well and keep growing their businesses. I mean, it's hard not to get excited for someone when they put in the work and they see the results. So it's been I've been pumped, kind of celebrating and seeing what everyone else is doing. Um, but yeah, let me. I want to talk about my note, my December goals here for a little bit. Um, just talk about what's on tap for me and what I'm trying to get done to finish 2017. There's been a lot of movement, obviously, with things. So the number one priority I have right now is actually not related to reselling, and that is to I have some repairs that need to be done to the townhouse to rent it out. So now that you know this rent, this basically this rental townhouse and future properties are going to be a big part of what I do. Um, and so a lot of my time is going to be going to that. So I actually have to do a lot of painting over there now that all we've moved everything out. So it'll be a lot easier. We got to finish painting. Uh, I've got new carpet being installed, I think on the 15th of this month. So I need to get all the painting done where the carpet is now before they put the new stuff in. And then once they finish the carpet, I need to uh, renovate the upstairs bathroom. So I'm going to be replacing the toilet, which I haven't ever replaced the toilet before. So that'll be interesting. I'm uh, kind of excited to, to learn how to do that. Um, and I need to put in, we have this hardwood laminate. It's like a pergo, um, like a dark, dark colored wood that goes all throughout the downstairs and in the bathroom downstairs. And I'm going to put that in the upstairs bathroom so it matches. It's a very small bathroom, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but that's something I have to get done this December. We have tenants coming in January 1, so like no ifs, ands, or buts. And I want it done before Christmas, so I'm not stressing down at the last minute. So that's going to be my goal number one for December is getting that townhouse ready to go, ready to rent and it will start cash flowing on January 1. Uh, so the second goal, reselling related, is going to be uh, that I want, I have about 300 items, I've been counting them and kind of going through and tweaking some stuff, 300 items in my store, and I referenced that white background earlier, that are old inventory, what I would deem is very old, I mean 18 months plus. And a lot of them, I've been auctioning them off for probably a month and a half straight now, and I've sold a lot of it off, but I'm to the point now where it's not worth it to keep auctioning them and all the labor that goes into it to only make like a 4 or $5 profit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and cancel all the listings um, and delete all of them. I'm going to go through the bins that they're in, and I'm going to determine what has value and can be resold for like a good price. And I'm going to actually fully relist those. So brand new inventory numbers, bins, pictures, listings, the whole work so that it aligns with my current inventory. And then anything that I deem not valuable, I don't want anymore, I'm going to donate and get one last you know, donation receipt for the year. We got tax time coming up, all that. And that way I can start 2018 with a really clean slate of inventory, stored how I want it, organized how I want it, um, in the right format that I want it, you know, the quality that I would expect, you know, all those things. Uh, I did take it. One thing I'll warn you about when you're auctioning a lot of old inventory is I've taken a pretty big hit to my seller rating because I've had to cancel orders because things I've stole or stored for 
you know, two, two years, 18 months without being in a poly bag the way I do it now, you know, doing it the old way, I found distressing holes, you know, all, all sorts of things that you would happen over time if you don't properly store these. Cause I, it was when I first started reselling. And um, so, and they went with the move from New York down to here. So I really want to go through and purge that and just make sure that like I'm getting my seller rating back up. I don't want any more cancellations, um, you know, things like that. Having a hard time finding stuff really can cause issues. Um, so yeah, that's the goal is just to get that inventory all clean and good to go. Um, and so I want to get all of those processed relisted. I'm guessing I'm probably going to, probably two thirds of it is still really good inventory. Um, so I'll probably list a solid 200 items this month just from that. Um, I want to list a total of 350 items this month uh, just to get back on track. I want to finish the year really strong. Um, so I started listing today again, which is really exciting to get back to that routine. Um, and then, so you know, that's kind of the goal two and three, I guess, is to recycle that all inventory and to list a total of 350 items. And then um, the fourth goal is going to be I want to source 300 items. So now that I'm going to start thrifting again on the weekends and, you know, after work occasionally, we have thrift stores near us. A new place is I want to stock up on inventory so I'm ready to go uh, for the new year and hit it hard and hit it strong. Um, and then my last one, goal number five, is I want to put out at least two videos a week, occasionally three. Um, and I want to get back to doing shows with Chris, 10K in the Bay, every Sunday because I really enjoy doing those. Um, so those are my five big goals. I'm going to keep it real simple, keep it to those, real practical, you know, getting things on track. And, um, you know, if everything goes well and we do what I'm going to do, um, entering 2018 and looking kind of reflecting back on this year, I will enter 2018 with having acquired a rental property in the past year. We're moving into a new house. I'll do about it's somewhere between 60 and $70,000 on eBay, which is about almost double what I did last year, about 70%, 75% higher. Um, depending on where I finish and um, have started this new contracting role. And so and getting, we're getting married to start the new year. So just be like a really cool way to finish if I can just pull all this off and finish strong. So just really excited about it. Excited to share that journey with you guys. I'll have a lot of good feedback that I do appreciate from you guys about, you know, really what you're looking for for content. And I'll just kind of, I want to share with you guys what a lot of the overwhelming feedback, because it was really definitive. There really wasn't a lot of gray area. It was everyone wanted to see what sold videos, which is why I kicked off doing this one is, the overwhelming majority of people said that viewing videos of what sold, seeing the tags, seeing the feedback, you know, seeing what it actually sold for, what we bought it for, gave them like the most value. That's some of the things that come to YouTube to watch as a reseller. Um, the second thing was actually uh, people wanted to hear about goals, objectives, and like your st my strategic type plans and things that I put together because it's really helpful in other people's businesses and they like to track how I'm doing and kind of part of the journey. So that's what I'm going to be consistently sharing again while I'm talking about goals right now. Um, and then the two other big things was they wanted to uh, hear about, they want hauls, haul videos still. Uh, people really enjoy the haul videos um, and that they wanted to see the documentation of kind of how the real estate journey evolves, you know, the mistakes, the successes, all the things about how I'm leveraging eBay into real estate because I think a lot of people have an interest in that. So those are the four main buckets that were just kind of resounding. And that's what I'm going to try to really deliver coming into this next year. I'm going to keep collaborating with people because I enjoy collaborating. Um, but yeah, that's really just what I'm doing moving forward. Just get consistent and get on track and just keep things chugging along. And I kind of said since the beginning of the year, I'm a big believer in setting really, really big ambitious goals and you chase them as hard as you can. And if you fall a little short, usually falling short is going to be a lot higher than that, you know, safe, uh, agreeable goal you set in the beginning. So that's just kind of how I like to do things. Uh, so hope everyone's doing well. I think that's going to be about it for me. We do have to take a trip back over to the townhouse, um, get a couple things, and uh, keep. We have we probably like ten percent of our stuff we still need to move over here. So we're trying to take nightly trips over, um, and then I want to get a couple things shipped and listed. I also did my first porch pickup today, um, which worked really well. It's going to save me even more time. I'm just looking for little time hacks wherever I can find them. Like not having to go to storage unit was definitely a time hack. Having my inventory here, the porch pickup, not going to the post office, that's another time hack. So I'm just really trying to string a bunch of these together to get more time to keep doing videos and all this other stuff that's coming up. So um, hopefully that was, hopefully ever this video was helpful. Hit that like button for me, guys. I got 70 watching live, which I really appreciate, but I only see 17 likes. Um, the likes really make a difference to YouTube and, you know, them seeing this as valuable content so that other people can see it. So if you can give me a like, a good thumbs up on the way out, I would appreciate that very much. 
Um, definitely drop in the comments. I want to hear how everyone's November's went. What have you sold? Kind of what is your home run? Uh, share below with everyone just so we can see some of the best stuff you've sold and, and what your business is and where it's evolved to this year. I love reading it. I love the comments. I'll start getting back to everyone. And if you do want to get in touch with me, DM me on Instagram, Endless Entrepreneurs. That is the best way to get a hold of me. Have an awesome night, everyone, and uh, we will talk soon. See you.